Bhagavani Pracharine Nirvasesha Shanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, we're going through the Krishna book and we're on today chapter number 34, entitled Shankachuda Killed. So, it said once upon a time, the coward men of Vrindavan, meaning Nanda Maharaj and his brothers and other friends, they wanted to observe Shiv Ratri. So they decided they go to this place called Ambikaban, to where there's a Shiva temple there. So the Ras the Rasa Lila was performed in the Sarat Purnima, which is in the autumn. And then the next big festival after Sarat Purnima, the next big festival is Holi on Gaur Purnima day, when Lord Chaitanya appeared. But before, before the Holy Yatra, before the, the Holy, before the Do Yatra, the day when Lord Chaitanya appeared, there's a festival for Shivratri. So the Shivratri festival, sometimes the Vaishnavas do it. They don't do it every time, but sometimes they will do it. Of course, the Shivites, those who are the, the Shivites, the followers of Lord Shiva, they will do Shivratri every year. But for, but for the devotees, we don't do it every year. So Nanda Maharaj, they decided this time, this year, they decided they wanted to go and do it. So, they went to this temple of Ambikaban and Some people say this temple and Bikavan, some people say it's in Gujarat, and some other people say it's near to Mathura. Yeah, because it said the temple was on the bank of the Saraswati River. And there's no Saraswati River in Gujarat. This meeting is being recorded. Hmm. 
But there is the Saraswati over beside the Ganga and the Yamuna. There's also Saraswati. So Prabhupada said all of the big places, all the holy places, there's always a nice river there. And of course in India there's many holy rivers. Ganga, Yamuna, Narmada, Kaveri, Godavari, Saraswati. So Ambikavan was on the bank of the Saraswati and Nanda Maharaj and all the cowherd men, they all went there. So when they got there, the first thing they did, they went to worship the deity, Lord Shiva, and also Ambika, his, his consort. Ambika is another name for Durga, the wife of Lord Shiva. So <coughs> the wife of Lord Shiva, he has his own temple and Ambika, she has her own temple. So Lord Shiva's wife, she's a very chaste lady and she will not go far away from her husband. She's always with the association of her husband. So when the cowherd men reached there, then they took their bath in the river Saraswati. Whenever you, when you go to visit a holy place, the first thing you should do is to take a bath there. And it's also good if you shave your head. And sometimes we see the women also shave their heads. Just like if, if you go to Tirupati, if you go to Tirupati, all the lady, many ladies when they go to Tirupati to see Lord Balaji, they will also shave their head. All the family, the whole family, they'll shave their head. So they would take their bath and then they would worship the deities and then they give charity to the brahmanas there. In the Vedic culture, the brahmanas and the sannyasis can take charity. They're allowed to accept charity. So these men from Vrindavan, the cowherd men from Vrindavan, they had brought cows with them to give charity. These cows were all decorated with gold. And the, the cows were also 
dressed, they had beautiful garlands, flower garlands around their necks. So the brahmanas, they are allowed to take charity because they don't do any business. They're not in, they don't do any business. They will only do the duties of the brahmana. The duties of the brahmana, they do things like they have to study the scriptures. And they must also teach others the scriptures. So brahmanas, they're meant to help to make other people also brahmanas. So if somebody becomes a disciple of a brahmana, then he also is given the chance to become a brahmana. He may not be born a brahmana, but if he is a disciple of a brahmana, he can become a brahmana. And the brahmana should be a devotee, he should worship Lord Vishnu. And when people give them charity, then the brahmana can accept the charity, and then if, if he likes, he can give the charity also for the service of Vishnu. And if we give charity to the brahmanas, then it's very pleasing to Lord Vishnu. And you please not only Vishnu, you please also the demigods. So when you go to a holy place, there's certain things you're supposed to do. We said, first of all, you should take a bath, you should worship the deity, and then you should give charity. And you should also fast one day. So when you go to a holy place, you're supposed to stay there for at least three days. So the first day, you should fast, and at night, you can drink a little water. You don't eat any food, but you can drink a little water. If you drink water, that's not breaking the fast. So the cowherd men, Nanda Maharaj and all the cowherd men, they spent the first night on the bank of the river Saraswati and they fasted all day and drank a little water at night. But when they were taking rest, a big snake from the forest came before them and it was very hungry and it began to swallow Nanda Maharaj. Uh, 
ออนอนพักผ่อนกันอยู่ในขณะนั้นปรากฏว่ามีงูมางูมาด้วยความหิวโหยแล้วก็ได้กินนันดมหาราชเข้าไป So Nanda Maharaj was very afraid. He was his feet were in the mouth of the snake, and the snake was swallowing him. Nanda Maharaj was so scared. So Nanda Maharaj called out to Krishna. He said, "Oh, my dear son Krishna, please come and save me." และนันดมาราชนก็ร้องเรียกขอความช่วยเหลือจากคริชนาโดยบอกว่าโอ้คริชนาลูกชายของข้าได้โปรดมาคุ้มครองข้าด้วยเถิด This snake is swallowing me บอกว่างูเนี่ยกำลังจะกลืนข้าเข้าไปแล้ว So n a n d a m a r a j called out, and all the other all the other men they woke up and they saw what was happening, and they got some look they got some logs from because they built a fire. And they brought the logs. The logs were burning, and they tried to beat the snake with the burning logs to kill it, but they couldn't. Remember, this festival takes place. Shivratri festival takes place during the winter time, so it's quite cold in the night. เทศกาลนี้เนี่ยเกิดขึ้นในช่วงฤดูหนาวเพราะฉะนั้นอันนี้เนี่ยเกิดขึ้นตอนกลางคืน So they built a fire. At night to keep warm. So the men, the coward men, took the burning logs. They got some of the logs from the fire, and they tried to use it to burn the snake. But the snake wouldn't let go of Nanda Maharaj. It wouldn't stop swallowing Nanda Maharaj. And then Krishna appeared, and Krishna touched the snake with his lotus feet. So immediately, being touched by the lotus feet of Krishna, then the snake gave up his snake body and he changed and he became a beautiful demigod. งูก็สละล่างที่เป็นงูแล้วก็ปรากฏในรูปของร่างเทวดาที่สวยงาม And when he changed, when he gave up the snake body, they they changed into this form that was very beautiful, it was very handsome, and he was effulgent. Effulgence was coming from his body, and he was decorated with golden necklace. แล้วก็ขณะที่เจ้างูตัวนี้เนี่ยทิ้งร่างไปแล้วเนี่ยก็ปรากฏว่าร่างใหม่ที่เขาได้รับคือร่างเทวดาร่างเทวดานี้เนี่ยสง่างามมากแล้วก็มีเครื่องประดับตกแต่งแล้วก็เขาเนี่ยมีรัศมีอันเปล่งปลั่งที่ออกมาจากร่างกายของเขามีสร้อยคอทองคำ So this this demigod offered the obeisances to Lord Krishna and then stood before Lord Krishna very humble. So then Krishna spoke to the demigod, and he said, "Oh, you look like a very nice demigod." Then Krishna spoke to the demigod, and he said, "Oh, you look like a very nice demigod." 
It looks like you have been favored by the goddess of fortune. But how, what did you do, what terrible things did you do that you got the body of a snake? So then the demigod began to tell the story of his previous life. And the demigod said, in my previous life, I was a demigod of the higher planets called the Vidyadhara Loka. Yeah, Vidyadharas, the Vidyadharas, they are people of the higher planets, they are demigods. So the demigod said, I was known all over the world because of my beauty and because I was a very famous person. And I used to have an airplane and I would travel in my airplane, I would go everywhere in my airplane. So one time I was traveling, I saw a great sage named Angira and, and he looked very ugly. And he said, I was very proud of my good looks, so I laughed at him. And so I, I, I was very sinful, I should not have laughed at him. And so that sage, he cursed me to take the form of a snake. So Srila Prabhupada explains to us that sometimes, some, we see sometimes a person is favored by Krishna. But before we get the favor of Krishna, when we're not, when before we get the favor of Krishna, we're under the material nature. So this demigod, the Vidyadhara, he was, he was a, materially, he was quite elevated because he was very good looking and he was a demigod. So materially he had a big position. And so he was able to travel everywhere by his aeroplane. But then he got cursed and he became a snake in his next life. So Prabhupada said, you have to be very careful. You may have a very good birth in this life. You may be very good looking in this life. Next life, you may become a snake. So Prabhupada said, you have to be very careful. You may have a very good birth in this life. You may be very good looking in this life. Next life, you may become a snake. 
ว่าชาตินี้เนี่ยเราอาจจะมีทุกอย่างทางวัตถุเนี่ยที่ดีที่ดูที่ดูลำมีแบบความล้ำหน้าอะไรทุกอย่างแต่ว่าเราไม่รู้ชาติหน้าเนี่ยเราอาจจะต้องเกิดเป็นมูก็ได้ We shouldn't think because we have a human body that we cannot become the, go into the lower species. We can. We can go down. We could go up. Or we could. We can also go down. So this demigod Vijayadara. He was he, he was cursed to become a snake, but when he got touched by the lotus feet of Krishna, then he came to Krishna consciousness. So he understood that in his previous life he was very sinful. But when we become Krishna conscious, then we know that we are the servant of the servant of Krishna. And we also know that we're very, we're not important. We're very yeah, insignificant. And if a devotee can do, if we do any good, then we understand it is only by the grace of the spiritual master and Krishna. So then the demigod said to Krishna, he said, I was very proud. Of the beauty of my past body, my other body. And I made a fool. I laughed at this the sage Angira being so ugly. When he cursed me to become a snake, but he said, "Now I can understand. This wasn't a curse. He said this was actually good for me. It was a blessing for me." If he had not cursed me. I would not have got the body of a snake. And I would never have been kicked by your lotus feet. But because I was touched by your lotus feet, I got now I'm free of all my material contamination. So in material life, four things are very valuable. One is to be born in a good family. Another is to be rich. And another thing is to be educated. And another thing is to be very good looking. So these four things. This is the assets. This is 
that what people want in material life. But if people are not Krishna conscious, then these things are a problem. Because if people have these things, if, but if they're not Krishna conscious, then they'll just use them for sense gratification. And they'll just be sinful. And been, when they're sinful, the result is they'll get a very low birth in the next life. So Vijadara was a demigod and he had a beautiful body but he had to become a snake because of his pride. So if somebody is very proud of their material qualities, maybe their wealth or their good looks, then they will suffer. And if we don't learn how to be respectful to other people, then we will be put into the bodies of a low, low species like a snake. Snake is considered the most cruel and most envious of all species of life. But when people are envious of others, they're even worse than snakes. A snake can be controlled by mantras. But if a person is envious, he cannot be controlled by anybody. So the demigod Vijadara was speaking to Krishna and he said, he said, now I think I have become freed from all my sinful activities. So he said, he asked Krishna, please give me permission to go back to my home in the heavenly planets. So Prabhupada says that when people are attached to doing uh, good karma, they want to go to higher planets to enjoy the results of their good karma. But they cannot do that without the permission of the Supreme Lord. So in the Bhagavad Gita, it says that less intelligent people, they want material benefits. 
่ในปรากฏคิดตาเนี่ยได้ตรัสไปว่าบุคคลที่มีปัญญาน้อยเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยอยากจะได้รับผลประโยชน์ทางวัตถุ and to get material benefits they worship demigods แต่เพื่อที่จะได้รับผลประโยชน์ทางวัตถุเนี่ยเขาจะบูชาเราเทวดา But the benedictions they get from the demigods have to be with the permission of the supreme Lord Krishna or Vishnu. The demigods cannot give benedictions without the permission of Krishna. เราเทวดาเนี่ยไม่สามารถที่จะให้พรกับใครได้โดยปราศจากการอนุญาต So even we want to get material benefit, we have to worship Krishna. ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยอยากจะได้รับผลประโยชน์ทางวัตถุก็ตามเนี่ยเราจะต้องบูชา Krishna. And you have to ask Krishna. You want some you have some material desire. You don't worship a demigod. You worship Krishna and ask Krishna. ถ้าเกิดเราเนี่ยมีความต้องการทางวัตถุเนี่ยบุคคลที่เราควรที่จะบูชาก็คือพระเจ้าไม่ใช่เราเทวดา Whatever you want, whatever material benedictions you want, we should ask Krishna. We don't ask the demigods. เราต้องการพรอะไรก็แล้วแต่อาจจะเป็นพรทางวัตถุก็แล้วแต่เราควรที่จะขอจากพระเจ้าไม่ใช่เทวดา Yeah, there's a difference between asking the demigods and asking Krishna. เพราะมันมีข้อแตกต่างระหว่างการขอพรจากเราเทวดาแล้วก็ขอพรจากพระเจ้า Just like Dhruva Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj worshipped the supreme personality of Godhead to get a material benediction. ตัวอย่างเช่นเหมือน Dhruva Maharaj ที่ท่านเนี่ยบูชาบูชาพระเจ้าเพื่อที่จะได้ผลประโยชน์ทางวัตถุ Right, Dhruva Maharaj wanted to get a big kingdom. Dhruva Maharaj เนี่ยต้องการที่จะได้ราชอาณาจักรที่ยิ่งใหญ่ So he got the favor, he got the blessing of the supreme lord. เราท่านเนี่ยก็ได้รับพรจากพระเจ้าสูงสุด But what the supreme lord actually came before Dhruva Maharaj, and Dhruva Maharaj saw the supreme lord. แล้วรูปมาราเนี่ยก็พระพระเจ้าทรงเสนอทรงมาปรากฏต่อหน้าดูปมาราแล้วก็ให้พรเขา So when d r u v a m a r a saw the supreme lord he said now I'm fully satisfied he said now I don't want anything I don't need the kingdom ตอนที่ดูปมาราเนี่ยได้เห็นพระพระเจ้าทรงสุดเนี่ยปรากฏว่าดูปมาราบอกว่าโอ้ข้าพระเจ้าเนี่ยรู้สึกพึงพอใจมากเลยแล้วไม่อยากได้เลย So an intelligent person doesn't worship demigods to get favors from them. He will directly worship Krishna. And if he wants something material, he will ask Krishna, not the demigods. So Vijayadara was waiting to get permission from Krishna to go back to heaven. So he said, the, the demigod said, he said, he said, because I've been touched by your lotus feet, so I'm free of all my bad karma. แต่เวลาท่านนี้นะกล่าวว่าเพราะว่าข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยได้สัมผัสกับพระบาทรูปดอกบัวของพระองค์แล้วทําให้ข้าเนี่ยเป็นอิสระจากกรรมทั้งหลาย You are the most powerful of all the yogis. พระองค์เนี่ยทรงเป็นผู้ที่มีพลังอํานาจมากที่สุดในบรรดาโยกีทั้งหลาย You are the supreme personality of Godhead. You are the master of all the devotees. And you are the proprietor of all the planets. And you are the proprietor of all the planets. 
So I am asking your permission to please allow me to go to heaven. And please accept me as being surrendered unto you. And then the, the demigod also glorifies the chanting of the holy name. He said, I know that anybody who is engaged in chanting your holy name, they get free from all sinful reactions. So he said, I am sure that anybody who is fortunate enough to be touched by your lotus feet will also get free of their sinful reactions. So I am sure that now I am free of the curse of the Brahmana. Because I've, I've, I've seen you and I've been touched by your lotus feet. So this way Vijayadara got permission from Krishna to go back to his home in the higher planets. So after getting permission, he circumambulated Lord Krishna and offered his obeisances unto him. And then he went back to the heavenly planets. So in this way Nanda Maharaj was saved from the danger of being eaten by the snake. So the cowherd man, they had come there to worship, to do the, the worship of Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva's wife, Ambika. So they finished it, they finished all the the worship and then they prepared to go back to Vrindavan. But while they were going back to Vrindavan, in their minds they are thinking about how wonderful, how amazing Krishna is. And they were remembering how this Vijadara had been delivered. When they thought about that, when they, by remembering about how Vijadara got saved from his curse of being a snake, they became so attracted, they became so attached to Krishna. So they come there to worship Lord Shiva and Ambika, but the result was that they became more attached to Krishna. Just like the gopis, just like the gopis when they're young girls, 
they worship the goddess Katyayani to get Krishna as their husband. They worship Katyayani, they want to get their husband, and the result was they became more attached to Krishna. So in the Bhagavad Gita, it talks about demigod worship. So people may worship Brahma or Shiva or Indra or Chandra to get some material benefit. So these people are described less intelligent. They don't know the real purpose of life. The coward men of Vrindavan were not ordinary men. And whatever they did, they did it for Krishna. And so even when they worship demigods like Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma, they become more attached to Krishna. So that is good. That is what we want. We want to become more attached to Krishna. But if we go to Krishna for some personal benefit, that is not good. So this is a nice pastime here. So we will stop here. There's more in the chapter. We will continue next week, the other part, pastime, which is told. Yeah, we, did, we didn't tell about the killing of Sankachuda. We'll hear that next week. But we've heard about the liberation of the Vijadhara. He was at this Vijadara's name. He is a demi. His name was Sudarshan, and he was the chief of all the Vijadaras. So we can worship Lord Shiva, and the worship of Lord Shiva is allowed if we become more attached to Lord Krishna. Then your worship is successful. Okay, any questions? Yes, Gurudev, we have three devotees. They rest their hands. Oh. Okay, I can see. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, Prabhupada. Thank you for a very beautiful class, Guru Maharaj. Today my question is about the Vidya Dara. He became a snake just by laughing at the Angira Muni. And because of Adita, please, because of this he need to become snake. And I just 
uh, realize that during this our I mean devotee life, we met many devotee and sometimes unknowingly or unknowingly we have. I think I have been laughing at some devotees. Sometimes they can't sing nicely. Sometimes you know like then uh, I just realized that I my offense a lot of offenses. So so <laughs> now what should we do? You know because. We, we met a lot of devotees, sometimes they are not good looking also, and sometimes they can't sing very well as well. And sometimes we just think, oh, his wife is not so good, why he's singing for Skirtan, why he didn't give to sing to another people, you know, because his wife is cannot hear by other devotee, but he's still holding the mic. And in this way, I have been offense to many devotees, Guru Maharaj. So now I'm very uh, surprised that... <laughs> This is a big offense and we can take the form of the snack or any other animal. So how do we do after we know that we have done this offense? And I also don't remember who, to whom I did offense because it's not a one person, it's many person and some of the names you know, I don't know as well. So how, how to rectify this? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Come down from Brojina. Come down วันนี้ได้ฟังไปว่าจากการที่วิทยาดาลเนี่ยได้หัวเราะใส่คนนึงเนี่ยทําให้ชาติหนึ่งเขาต้องกลายเป็นงูเลยโปรเจกต์บอ
แต่ถ้าเกิดเราปฏิบัติการริบต้นเสียสละรับใช้อย่างดีเนี่ยก็จะทําให้เราเนี่ยสามารถเป็นอิสระจากผลกรรมเหล่านี้ได้ But we have to do very sincere devotional service แต่ว่าเราเนี่ยจะต้องทําการริบต้นเสียสละรับใช้ที่จริงจัง And we have to give proper respect and uh, uh, not offend any devotees. So we always offer our obeisances to devotees, and we ask them to forgive me, forgive us if we've been offensive to them. Right. We always say to devotees when we meet devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. So in this way, we can get free of our sinful reactions. Sinful reactions go very deep, many lifetimes of sins. So these sins, the cause of all these sinful activities, the root cause is ignorance. And because of ignorance, we have false ego, and because of that, we have sinful desires. And when, when we do sinful activities, then we will get reactions for it. But the reactions may not come all at the same time. Yeah, the, the reactions may take time. That some reactions may come immediately, and some reactions may take a longer time. Some reactions may come from our past life. Just like the the snake which was eating Nanda Maharaj, his last life he had been sinful, so he was cursed to become a snake in the next life. So in the same way, we are worried about sinful reactions. They may come in the next life, so you want to get rid of them before that next life. If we want to go back to Godhead, we have to get rid of all of our karma. So long as we have karma, we have to take birth again in the material world. So you don't want to have any karma. You want to be very careful to keep good relationships with everyone. So we have to learn to give proper respect to everyone. So we have to learn to give proper respect to everyone. 
กับทุกคน Keep nice relationships. And be humble and surrender. And if somebody is not very nice to us, we should think that I must have done something to offend them in my previous life. ทำนิสัยไม่ดีใส่เราเนี่ยเราก็ต้องเข้าใจว่าเราเนี่ยทำอะไรไม่ดีใส่เขาในชาติแล้ว Because of my sinful activities in my previous life, now they're coming to give me trouble. เป็นเพราะว่าผลบาปที่ฉันเคยทำใส่เขาในชาติแล้วชาตินี้เนี่ยเขาถึงได้มาเพื่อที่จะตอบแทนฉันแบบนี้ And if you try to get revenge on them, it's not good. Sometimes people say, "An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth." You do that to me, I'll do that to you. So if we do like that, then everybody will have no eyes and no teeth. Yeah, we'll be knocking out everybody's eyes and teeth, and we'll have no eyes and no teeth. Everybody will be blind and no teeth. So it's not a good idea. We must be humble and tolerant. Hare Krishna. Okay, what's the other question? Thank you very much. We have five more questions, Gurudev. Oh, okay. Next, uh, uh, Shaya Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. According to Sira Prabhupada, อาจารย์อาจารย์ช่วยแปลพี่หน่อยค่ะอ่าทุกมีความสงสัยว่าอย่างศาสนาในโลกเนี้ยค่ะมีหลายมากมายหลากหลายศาสนาคำถามของพี
that even the religions that they don't uh, they don't believe in in the form but uh, when they call out the name of god is the same source is the is the same same lord okay but there's yeah. yes there's only one god right there's only one god but he's known in different ways just like oh. we say god can be brahman paramatma or bhagavan All right. Some people they will worship Om. So Om is also Krishna. Om is the sound representation of Krishna. And some people are worshipping some people are worshipping the Vishwarup, the universal form. That is also a form of Krishna. And some people, the yogis, they are meditating on the Paramatma, the super soul in the heart. That's also Krishna. And then the devotees, we are worshipping Krishna directly. So there are different forms of God, many different forms. So somebody is calling to God, they recognize there's a controller, there's a creator, there's someone behind the world. So that's good. But their knowledge is not complete, that's all. <coughs> They need the association of devotees to get complete knowledge. Okay. What's the second question? Second question is, if Krishna is on total earth, then why don't he uh, arrange in such a way that everyone can uh, know him? In the present world, we can see that there are so many religions and there are so many teachings, so many philosophy that make people confused yeah. and uh, go in the wrong path. But if he is the controller, why don't he arrange everything in in a, in one way that everyone can have a clear understanding on the spiritual path? Well, we have to we have to understand Krishna arranges everything according to the individual's qualification and their own and according to their desire. เราจะต้องเข้าใจก่อนว่าคริชนาเนี่ยจัดการสิ่งเหล่านี้เนี่ยมาเพื่อตามคุณสมบัติของแต่ละแต่ละคนตามความต้องการของแต่ละคน Not everybody is willing to accept even Krishna Krishna is a controller but he gives everyone free will some people don't want to surrender to Krishna they don't want to accept Krishna so according to people's position in the material nature, some are in the mode of ignorance, so they worship in a particular way. Just like some people, they will sacrifice animals, 
in front of the demigods and they will kill the animals so they can eat the meat. And some people they will worship different demigods to get material desires. Just like Prahlad Maharaji's father, Haranyakashipu, he worshipped Lord Brahma to get benedictions. And then there, there was a, another there was another demon called Vrikashura and he worshipped Lord Shiva. He wanted to get benedictions. So not everybody wants to get the highest thing. Krishna wants to make people devotees, but not everybody wants devotion. You think, no, I don't want devotion. I want money. I want power. I want fame. So Krishna arranges to satisfy their material desires. And then when they get their material desires, then they're not happy. They're still not happy. Then they, then they want more and they want more. So Krishna has to take away all their material desires and then when, they're re when all their material desires are finished, then they come to Krishna. So Krishna is the controller and he's controlling. He's, he knows what he's doing. You don't have to tell Krishna how to control. But there are some people Krishna doesn't want to bring them back to Godhead because they're demons. They just want to stay in the material world. And so Krishna lets them stay. Krishna gives everyone what they what they want. What what is your desire? Krishna Okay. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Shai. Next question from Madhavi Pavani Mataji. Madhavi Pavani Mataji, Hare Krishna. อ่าอาจารย์ค่ะคือว่าคําถามอาจจะไม่ได้ตรงประเด็นมากนะคะแต่ว่าพอดีว่ามีเอ่อคนที่แบบเค้าถามมีเซลล์เกี่ยวกับ
her question is she say might not be related to the uh, today's story but someone asked her and she was not be able to uh, really answer that so she would like to ask for your advice on that they asked that how uh, how the soul is manifest uh, like where it come from and how does it work how does it work well, the soul is eternally a part of Krishna. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I think it's chapter number 15, Mami Vamsa Jiva Loke, Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. He said, the living entities are all my eternal parts and parcels. And it also said in the second chapter that for the soul there's no birth and there's no death. Hmm. And so the soul doesn't have a beginning and it doesn't have an end. It's eternally existing. So our spirit soul is, our, our, we have a spiritual form actually, and that spiritual form is contained within this material body. And when we get free of the material body, and we get free of all the karma, and then we go back to Godhead, the spirit soul goes back to Godhead, then we will manifest our spiritual form. So originally we were all Krishna conscious. But we have come to this material world. And when we go back to Krishna, we go back to our spiritual body. We'll go back to our home in the spiritual world with a spiritual body. So, how does it work? Sometimes we will say, Krishna is one, he's God, he's the original Supreme. And just like a father, he gets pleasure from having children, he has a family. And so Krishna is the father of all the living entities, and we are all like his children. No. So we come from Krishna. We are all parts of Krishna. We have the qualities of Krishna, but in tiny quantity. And we are here for the purpose to give pleasure to Krishna. Just like the child gives pleasure to her father. So we give pleasure to Krishna when we engage in Krishna's service.
You understand? Madhu. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, I understand. Thank you. Okay. Next question. We have uh, from one Prabhuji. Prabhuji? He, uh, uh, he is Thai, I think. Yeah. Uh, unmute, let me have a chia layer. Muru. Say Muru Kesan. Hare Krishna Kulu Mahalas. Peace, accept my humble obeisances. มัตตมัตตาจีกรุณาแปรผมเนี่ยนะครับคือผมมีข้อสงสัยอยู่ 2 ถึงยอมรับคําสาปของนางทานคาลีครับคําสาปของใครนะคะกันดารีครับกันดารีโอเคค่ะและเหตุใดราชวงศ์ยดุที่ทรงธรรมถึงได้รับผลกรรมเช
Because Gandhari was suffering, she'd lost all her hundred sons in the battle of Kurukshetra, so she's very unhappy. So she put her curse on the Yadu dynasty that they would all kill each other and go leave the world. So this way she's happy. Do you understand? I, under, I understand, Kuru Mahala. Right. Thank you really much for your explain. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the question. Okay. Any other questions, Archana? Uh, yes, good. I have a small question from me. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is, we consider the, the one who worshipped the demigod to be a less intelligent. In Bhagavad Gita also Krishna said that. But uh, sometimes, it, can it happen sometime like that, that they don't have the information that Krishna is the su supreme or Krishna is the one who gives them the benediction that they are being asking from the demigod. And because uh, they don't have this information, we consider them to be less intelligent or they are innocent. Well, they're less intelligent in the sense that they ask for material things. They get things which are material and so very temporary and limited. So that's the, the why they're less intelligent. And they're also less intelligent because they're thinking, they're approaching the demigod to get what they want. They should actually be understanding the demigods are servants of the Supreme Lord. So they don't understand there's a Supreme Lord. Or they're, it's like if you go to the government and you don't go to the proper channel and you just go to the, the secretary and you give a bribe to the secretary to do something and you don't go to the actual officer, then that's cheating. So you go to the demigods, it's like giving a bribe, it's like corruption. You're going to somebody who's not really the controller, but you're trying, and you're trying to get what you want from somebody who's not really the authority. So that's corruption. You understand? Yes, sir. So we try to stop corruption, you know, we don't like corruption. It's not good, right? So yes. people should go to the Supreme Authority, and the Supreme Authority is Krishna. We shouldn't give the bribe to the, the less important person. We should go to the supreme person, get what we want. So you have to translate. ตรงนี้เราคําถามก็ถามว่าทําไมถึงเอ่อกล่าวเช่นนั้นเพราะว่าบางครั้งเนี่ยคนที่เขาเนี่ยบูชาเราเทวดาเขาก็ยังไม่
ตัวอย่างสมมติเวลาเขาเนี่ยไปหาพนักงานเนี่ยแล้วเขาอยากได้อะไรเขาก็จะยัดเงินให้พนักงานรางเยอะๆเพื่อที่จะทําให้งานเนี่ยมันเดิมซึ่งการกระทําแบบนี้นะเราจะเรียกว่าคอร์รัปชันโดยที่อย่างนี้ค่ะเพราะฉะนั้นในการปฏิบัติชีวิตจริงก็เหมือนกันเราเนี่ยไม่ควรที่จะคอรับไปกับการบูชาเราเท่านั้น So people who worship demigods they're on the Vedic culture they're following the Vedic path gradually they will come to understand there's a supreme higher authority than the demigods สำหรับที่ปฏิบัติการบูชาเราเทวดาเนี่ยหมายความว่าเขาเนี่ยอยู่ในการปฏิบัติแบบวิถีพระเวทเพราะฉะนั้นเขาจะค่อยๆพัฒนามาในการรู้จักพระผู้เป็นเจ้าสูงสุดได้ They may worship the demigod to go to higher planets but the higher planets also there's birth and death they go to the higher planet stay for some time and then they come back so then they wonder is there any place I can go Where I don't have to come back, where I can get free of birth and death, so then we see. Then you have to worship the supreme Lord. You have to worship Vishnu or Krishna. แล้วบางทีเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยอยากไปในโลกที่สูงกว่าแต่พอเขาเนี่ยแต่พอเขาจะพยายามเพื่อจะได้รับการหลุดพ้นแบบนั้นเนี่ยเขาก็จะรู้ว่าในการที่จะไปที่โลกแบบนั้นเนี่ยจะต้องบูชา So worshippers of the demigods they gradually come to Krishna consciousness. Okay. Any other question? No more. Um. Yeah. No. no uh, I don't see anyone. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank all the devotees. Please take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And bless me also. <laughs> Danger everywhere. So always remember Krishna. That's. Most important. Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada ki. Yes. Go back to Vrindavan ki. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.